Oh my God, right. Yeah, Mondays are really boring. Hey folks, welcome to the vlog. It is Tuesday and I hope you're all doing well. If you're new here, hi, I'm Thomas. I am a PhD student in astrophysics at Cardiff University. And this is my sixth, seventh week. I don't know. I'm in the number of weeks in where N is definitely still less than 10. So welcome to the vlog. It is Tuesday morning and yesterday, I basically didn't do that much vlogging. It's a couple of clips which you have just seen Mondays kind of get a bit derailed with the fact that I have lab demonstrating in the morning, which takes up my entire morning. And then I spent most of yesterday afternoon trying to cross bugs uh, in my code, not physical, not like, like little beasties. It's Tuesday morning. I'm about to jump onto Twitch to do a study stream, the first one of the week. And the plan for today is essentially get through as much of the taught components that I have for the week and pull together some of the stuff that I was running on the server yesterday and run a few more things because I've had code that's been having issues for the last few days, but I think I've got them ironed out as of yesterday, late afternoon. So I'm gonna get on them and try and get them fixed. But I set up the stream. I also need tea. Fast forward a few hours and I've just had lunch. I've had a fairly productive morning. I've got a few things working that weren't yesterday and I've done some of the tots components of my uh, of my PhD that I have to do as part of my CDT, but I'm gonna talk more about my CDT next time. What I'm gonna talk about today is why I'm doing so much coding. Like, I'm doing astrophysics, not computer science. So why is it that every time I seem to talk to the camera, I'm talking about code? Bottom line is, almost every science PhD, almost every researcher in the sciences will use code at some point. The reason we do this is because we're dealing primarily with data, and it's way easier to do with data if you're coding. Now for my PhD, there are two main types of code that I use. There's data analysis code and there's simulation code. Now, up until this point, I've only been using data analysis code in my PhD. Simulation code will come later. Simulation code is what I'll be using to actually run my simulations and produce galaxies in my computer that can evolve as we would physically expect them to. Data analysis code is used to process the information from those simulations, creating visualizations, creating plots of different properties against each other. Data analysis code is what enables me to process the vast quantities the gigabytes and terabytes of data that come out of these large simulation codes. And these two types of codes are very different from each other. This afternoon, I've got to get back to work. In about a quarter of an hour, we have a group meeting for um, the Astral Group here at Cardiff University. And then this afternoon, I'm gonna get started on a machine learning module from Bristol University that I do as part of my CDT. I'll explain more about that next week as well. Right now, I've got to get back to the stream. Let's go. Oh my God, right. You know how I was saying about code being great and being a major part of my PhD and all that? I've been fighting with my code. Most actually, to be fair, I've been fighting with a computer for the last two hours. Basically, I've been having issues with the code and I thought, well, I'll try it in a virtual environment and install it in there. And then I had issues with IPython not like working. And I spent the last two hours trying to sort it. And now I'm getting help from someone else in the group because geez, this is a pain in the ass. I just want my code to work. I love my job. I love my job. Code is fun until it just sucks. <laughs> I think we maybe got it working now. Turns out there's no seminar today, so I've had like an hour of extra work. This is great. Wednesdays are normally so unproductive, but I'm actually getting work done. Well, I say work, I'm trying to get my remote SSH working so that I can do all my code stuff on the university servers. Coding is something that I didn't always find the easiest thing in the world, but I've like through practice through my undergrad and now into my PhD, I've actually got quite good at it. Like I'm definitely not brilliant. I'm definitely still a physicist in terms of coding, in terms of that I don't do all the things that computer scientists want me to do when I'm coding. I don't follow all the best practices, but I'm a much better programmer than I used to be. And I'm getting better every day. Currently, I'm using a lot of code that already exists and trying to get that to work. But 
I do want to do some code development myself. It's one of the things I want to do in my PhD is actually write simulation code and get better at developing code for my science as opposed to just, well, this stuff exists and so let me write scripts that uses stuff that somebody else has already made. I probably will make a video at some point about exactly how I do my work and what I use, like what code I use and what I use to edit my code. But that's, that's a topic for another video. What I'm actually finding is that everyone has different ways of doing their code. Like basically in my group, we're on multiple different operating systems in multiple different ways of coding. So I use a Windows computer with something called Windows Subsystem for Linux. It's kind of like a Linux machine running inside Windows, but not as a virtual machine. Then there are other people that use it as a virtual machine. They, they allocate a certain amount of RAM and storage in their computer for their Linux machine. Then there are other people that use MacBooks or iMacs and they code in macOS, which also works really well. Essentially, no one codes directly in Windows. It's not really designed for it. There's a lot of safety features that make coding a bit of a pain. I do like Windows Subsystem for Linux. It used to be a bit sketchy when it like first came out, like it was not the most useful thing in the world, but it actually works really well now. It's really quick and it means that I don't have to have virtual machines, which is, Amazing. It means I don't have to dual boot anymore. I used to dual boot from a Linux, like SSD. I had an SSD with a Linux install on it that I'd plug in via USB, which was not the best way to do it. I very much like having the rest of the functionality of my Windows machine because there are some things Linux just can't do. And while Linux is great for all the work that I do in terms of my astrophysics, it's really not great if I want to do, say, content creation or streaming. So if I want to do a work from home stream, like I do twice a week at the minute, I can't do that from Linux very easily. Like OBS exists, but it doesn't really work as well. It's very much got a better offering on Windows and Mac OS than it does on Linux. So being able to run Linux from within Windows is great. Besides, I connect to the university servers all the time anyway, and they're just directly Linux. Like it's realistically just where I'm connecting from. End of the work day, let's go home. Get the bus back. Now that it's uh, got very dark, I know it doesn't really look it in the video, now that it's got dark, I've uh, opted to take the bus rather than cycling because, I don't know, ever since it got darker in the evenings, the drivers have got, I don't know, more common. There's a lot more cars on the roads and everyone's a lot more impatient. Makes cycling a little bit more dangerous. I'll start cycling again once the, uh, once we get a bit more light in the, uh, in the evenings. Back in the house, had dinner and honestly, that was actually a pretty good day. Like. I didn't actually do really any real science, not not really. I spent most of the day doing sort of computery stuff. But honestly, sometimes there are days like that and I'm okay with that. Like it was a good day on the whole. I've got my remote connection working from my laptop to the university computers. Like that works now, which is awesome. It's now time to stream. I stream every week. This is not a surprise to anyone. I'm gonna be on Twitch tonight playing some Space Engineers because it's a bit of fun. Currently in the process of designing a hideously huge overkill ship to use as a sort of mobile base. It's essentially a base come movable ship. It's awesome. I'm really excited to play, to play a game with this once I've managed to get it set up. I'll talk more about like how and why I use code tomorrow and maybe give you a bit of a sort of rundown of what exactly I'm doing at the minute. But uh, yeah, I, a full length video on this is coming at some point. For now, I gotta play some Space Engineers and I'll see you tomorrow. Morning folks, back in the office on Thursday morning and honestly, today feels like a good day. I'm about to get started on a stream, but before that I want to set up the whole remote system far easier and uh, do all the remote editing stuff. I want to set it up on my desktop because, well, it was so much better on my laptop and I'd really like my desktop to function in the same way because, again, the whole GitHub up down thing is just way too much work. So I'm going to get that set up and then start streaming. And yeah, I hopefully we'll get a decent amount done today because yeah, yesterday I spent most of the time doing stuff with the remote setup. Right, car city centre, bus was late. I'm now going to have a fairly quick walk because tonight is Astronomy on Tap which I'll tell you more about when I'm a little bit. So Astronomy on Tap is an outreach event run by some of the PhD students in the physics department at Cardiff University. And honestly, it's great. Like, I love the fact that the department is so big on uh, big on outreach. I just wish I'd been on time for this. We have a the most common type of planet we see. And again, we didn't know that before, you know, the exoplanet era. Okay, we need to build a rocket to escape. 
Spoilers. <laughs> Right, so we're here in Porters. I've just been at the Astronomy and Tap meeting, but, but like not meeting event. But before I, it's probably better if I ask someone else to explain it. So this is Andy. <laughs> He's uh, one of the other PhD students in my group. Can you explain what Astronomy on Tap is? Um, so Astronomy on Tap is a public engagement event. It's an outreach event um, that universities organise, institutes organise, um, and it's a way of communicating our science with. Um, the general public. So there's a lot of research, we write a lot of papers, and it's all well and good. However, it's also usually written in quite complicated, convoluted ways, and people won't necessarily understand all of the jargon that we're using. So um, this is just a way of allowing it to be sort of communicated in a more compact and easy way. Yeah. And where did it come from? Is it started at the National Astronomy Meeting? Or? It started the National Astronomy Meeting. So every year the UK hosts um, a university. Um, a conference, and to in the run-up to that, we organised um, this Astronomy on Tap event. We ran four over June, and uh, it was a great success by the end, and now we're running one a month. It, it is a, a global thing as well, so yeah. it's, it happens all across the, the world. It started in New York, actually, I believe, um, and it's just grown from there. It's done in Germany and France and in, in all across America. And uh, yeah, we wanted to bring it to Cardiff and make sure that it was a, a sort of a very accessible thing uh, for everyone. Yeah, no, it's good. This is this is my first night here. <laughs> I didn't come to the last one because I think I was ill at the time or something. Yeah. Um, but no, it was good. So tonight the theme was actually, what was the official theme? The official theme was exploring life in space. Okay. Yeah. yeah so we had to we give a talk on sort of. Exoplanets, exoplanets and, like, and like, you know, how, how we're looking for life. So, like, uh, yeah, yeah, like what 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 we currently got. There's evidence towards life in space, uh, and then obviously as the last, second talk was, um, uh, Polly was giving a talk on um, what we how we have explored space so far, so the moon missions, uh, up, including upcoming missions like Artemis yep. going to the moon and you know putting a base on there, and that's uh, we wanted to sort of show. Um, the thing that the sort of buzzwords and the things that everyone sort of loves, like uh, aliens. Or yeah. Sort of yeah. For the record, we haven't found aliens yet. No, not yet. Not yet. Uh, possibly. Maybe. A few decades. One of these days, maybe. It's as close as fusion. <laughs> no, thanks, Andy. Yeah, no, that's all right. Morning, folks. It's Friday morning, and I. My voice is going again. Why am I getting ill again? Seriously, um, I'll keep this brief. I have a supervisor meeting in like a minute on Zoom because I'm not going into the office today. Last night was really good. It was uh, Astronomy on Tap, which is, I've ex Andy explained it last night. It's really good. It's a great outreach event. And I'm hopefully gonna get a bit more involved in it going forwards. Cause I don't know, just having like a really popular public outreach event. Like there was like 50 people there. Most of whom weren't astronomers. Like. That's just really cool. Today I'm at home, um, I'm gonna get on with as much work as I can possibly get done today. Um, because next week I am away for reasons that will become clear in the next vlog. I'm just not gonna vlog too much today because, you know, my voice. I would really like to not lose it entirely. So after lunch, I watched the stream from the Behind the Research team at the University of Bath. It was really nice just having it on in the background, having a bit of a chat with other people there while I was doing my work. While this was on, I managed to fix my projection issue and then I did a little bit of work on identifying the properties of each of the satellite galaxies within my simulations. I've got the properties printing that I want, I just need to make sure that they are attached to the galaxies I think they are. This evening, I'm just gonna have a chill one. I think I'm gonna edit the next episode of the Unstable Fluid podcast podcast that I host with Kat. It's been needing edited for a few weeks now and I just, when I get ill the last time I kind of fell massively behind on everything and I still haven't quite caught up on the podcast. Hopefully episode two will be out in the not too distant future. I hope. But yeah, I'm done working for this week. I'm signing off. And I think I'm going to sign off on the vlog until tomorrow because, oh I'm tired. Saturday morning and actually no technically now it's Saturday afternoon and I hate this is becoming a running theme on the vlog that I'm ill but I am it's fine I'm not cutting the vlog early for this one I feel better than I did last time so yeah I've spent the morning basically doing a lot of the edit for the Voyager video which should be out already but it just hasn't happened yet um but it's fine it's fine it will be out soon TM now I've got to the point where it's just make the graphics in After Effects which is a fairly time consuming thing 
but I feel like I actually have the full video planned out. I know exactly what I need to make. So I'm gonna get on some of that maybe this afternoon, but most of it will be done tomorrow. And it has to be done tomorrow because I'm not gonna be able to do it next week. And it needs to go out. So aside from all that, we're good. Now, I just really wanna be well. I'm really sick of being ill. I think it's just, a combination of going from not doing very much to being very busy and just tired and being a bit more run down than normal. And also just, there's a load of new viruses that I haven't been exposed to because I haven't lived in Wales before. Hence why I got ill twice. Also, I'm getting really close to the end of this book, Artemis by Andy Weir. It's the same author that wrote The Martian. It's so good. I'm tempted to start like doing sort of book reviews on this channel, the sort of um, science fiction or popular science books and that sort of thing. Cause I mean, I have many of them still to read over on that shelf. Would people be interested in that? I don't know. I, I really like this book. I don't know, I just really like Andy Bruce right now. I really want to read Project Hail Mary once I finish this. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. All right, folks, welcome to Sunday, last day of the week. And it's been a pretty good day so far. We went out to the cinema and saw the Puss in Boots Last Wish film. I think it came out last year, but it was back in the cinemas for some reason. And we just thought, eh, why not? Since coming back from the cinema, we've had lunch, done a bit of housework. I've just downloaded a load of stuff onto my laptop this week and I'm about to get started on finishing off the Voyager video because it has to be done today for the same reason that I've been packing a suitcase. And to find out why, you're gonna have to subscribe and hit the bell icon and you'll find out in the next vlog. Thank you for watching this one all the way to the end. I'm just gonna cut the vlog here because realistically the rest of the day is just me sitting at a computer editing. You've seen enough of that this week as it is. So thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next video. If you're looking for something else to watch, there's something here. And if the Voyager video is out by the time you're watching this one, then go watch that. I'll see you all in my next video. And I guess you'll find out where I'm going in the next one.